you today. I'd like to give you a little overview and I'll run a little video uh, of our company. I see the technology has six teams, the, the original six. 1967, they doubled in size. And Philadelphia had like one or two hockey rinks. Uh, but Ed Snyder had actually been at Boston Garden um, and had seen this long line at Boston Garden. And he asked somebody, he said, he goes, what's that for? He goes, well, the Boston Bruins, every game release about 200 tickets, you know, just, just before game time, so that some fans can get in the building. He goes, oh, what do you mean? He goes, they're sold out. He goes, oh, yeah, they're sold out every game. He goes, wow, they must be really good. He goes, no, they're in last place. And he said, well, I like this sport. It's a good sport. And he made application to, in the Philadelphia, where you know, a city that didn't even have hockey. But what's interesting is, and that's where we get our roots from, Ed Snyder's an entrepreneur, and we're a very entrepreneurial company. Ed Snyder didn't have a lot of money, and he put a, got a mortgage on his home, got an advance on food service commissions, uh, another loan and had some minority investors. So if you look at the roots of our organization, which are Ed Snyder, you know, Ed is one of the few people, and, and, and Al Davis, who recently passed away, is, is another, one of the few people in sports who actually made their living in wealth through sports. Uh, in most cases, sports teams are fought by the wealthy, and in many cases it's because they love the sport, in many cases it's because it's their coming out party, they may be the richest guy in the world, but nobody knows them, they want to know them. Uh, it's a very exclusive club, but our roots are really in the sports business. You know, we're, we're in the business of sports and entertainment. So to fast forward to 1996, uh, Comcast approached us. They were buying the Philadelphia 76ers, and they said, we would like to do a deal with you guys 
where we buy the basketball team, invest in your operation, we form a joint venture, and then create a network. Uh, they said, we don't want to run the team, we don't want to run, be involved in the buildings or anything like that, but, but we want to create a network. And at the time, we were building the what is now Wells Fargo Center. We own the Philadelphia Flyers, the Spectrum, Philadelphia Phantoms, and, and now we added in Comcast and brought in the Sixers. We started Comcast Sportsnet in 1997, and the whole play for Comcast, as you know, it's a cable company. At the time, they only had 4 million homes. Now Comcast is in 23 million homes and just acquired NBC Universal and has become you know, one of the biggest companies in America. But at the time, you know, if you're the cable, <coughs> if you excuse me, if you're a cable company, the dish is the enemy, and and we found a creative way to deliver our product, flyers to the Sixers, and we cut a deal with the Phillies via landline, and, and and the FCC rules were that as long as you deliver it by landline, you didn't have to up, as long as you didn't uplink it, you didn't have to offer it to the dish, and if you're a cable company, the dish is the enemy. So we started Comcast Sportsnet, uh, we're in 2.8 million homes, and Philadelphia still, of any major market, has the lowest dish penetration of any, of any major market, largely because, just like Boston, just like Chicago, New York, Philly, obviously is a huge sports town, and you know, using, using the content and using sports to create networks to compete against you know, the dish, I'm on a network now that's worth probably a half a billion dollars and how many subs that have Comcast kept because of that. So again, using that content to get into greater things. In the year, in the year 2000, we had, by then we had, we had absorbed the Sixers, we have the Flyers, the Spectrum's running well, the Core State Center at the time was running well, now the Wells Fargo Center. And we decided, okay, what are we going to do to grow? Um, we have great people, and, and one thing you people can all be rest assured and should feel good about that in sports and entertainment, we don't make a product, we don't make furniture, okay? We, we, don't, make, we don't manufacture anything. Our biggest asset is our people. People make it happen. The people in marketing, the people in, in operations, the people in team services, and on and on and on. Our biggest asset is people. And we said, okay, how are we going to grow? Because as a company, you always want to grow. And how are we going to create opportunity for our people? Because we don't want them log jammed where they're going to begin to leave the organization. Uh, we need to keep that funnel going. We had been in facility management, as I mentioned to you. I had worked for that company. It was called SMG. We sold that in uh, 1998. We decided that it was time to get back into facility management. So we started Global Spectrum. Uh, which manages the Mullen Center here, and, and 110 facilities we manage. In the year 2000, we managed five, okay, and, by, and we're up to 110 now, so we'll get an opportunity later, big growth opportunity. 110 facilities, you, you saw in the video, we, we have the Phoenix Cardinals Stadium, we've hosted the Super Bowl, we have the Miami Beach Convention Center, we have theaters, and we have many collegiate facilities. And in this area, UMass Lowell, we're at UMass Amherst, we're at University of Rhode Island, uh, and we're all over the country. And, and now we're worldwide. We have a stadium in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we're going to have a major stadium and athletic complex in Singapore, and we're working on something in Macau, China. So a smaller theater, 6,000 6, seater. Lots of opportunity, lots of growth. Uh, shortly thereafter that, uh, I was very good friends with a couple of gentlemen by the name of Ken Young and Todd Whitner, who was starting a their own food service company. They had worked for big food service companies and they wanted to go out on their own. They were doing about $5 million a year. Uh, we, we did a deal with them, hooked up with Ken and, and Todd to, to form Ovations. Uh, again, in, in our first year, in 2001, we did $5 million. Uh, we'll do $250 million this year. Uh, we're, in, we're in a lot of global facilities, but we're also in a lot of independent facilities. We're in minor league baseball. We're, we're now in the casinos, which has become a huge business for us, and state fairs and arenas and convention centers and stadiums, providing food service. And then, and then a couple years after that, we decided we'd get into ticketing. Um, with the advent of the internet, the barriers to entry to get into ticketing 
completely fallen down. Now, being in the software business isn't easy. Not anybody can get into it, but it's a lot easier now. And, and we've seen ticketing is somewhat revolutionary, revolutionizing our business in that ticketing used to be a service. When I first started my career, they, were, they called them hard tickets. They were on the racks, and you'd go buy them. And they sold them at grocery stores and drug stores. And, and then, of course, you got computerized ticketing. And it was just a way to purchase a ticket. But if you look at the advent of barcoding, now on a ticket you can put, you know, you can put your concessions, you can put your parking, you can put the ability to buy merchandise. It's also a great way in your ticketing system because now tickets are bought on the internet to to get data, and and that's where the new world is. It's all about the data, and and again I'll tell you why it's a great time for you guys to be coming into the industry. The data is so important now. Um, when I was a kid. You know, if you, if you looked in Worcester, Massachusetts, you had an ABC affiliate, an NBC affiliate, a CBS affiliate, and, and two little independents. Okay, and you maybe had three or four radio stations. So if you were marketing a show, we used to call it roadblocking. If you bought the six o'clock news for the circus, and you bought a, you know, your, your commercials, basically you were getting 90% of the TV market. So your, your dollars were spent very efficiently. If you wanted to get the word out the circus was in town, you could literally buy the six o'clock news and get, get everybody. And, 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 and ratings for programs, you know, the share of a, a major program would be like a 35 or 36, where now it's maybe a two or a five. So the world has changed. Now, you know, Springsteen saying the, the, the song, you know, was it 500 channels and nothing on? Well, now there's 500 channels and something on. So that's very fragmented. Radio is very fragmented. So you're advertising those when you go to promote a show or a team or what have you. It's very it's very expensive to promote that way. And as that become became expensive, inefficient, and tough to deal with in your budgets, along comes the internet, where now you you can collect this data, and for nothing, email somebody. Hey, the Rolling Stones are coming to town. Metallica's coming to town. Ramstein's coming to town. Britney Spears, and you can segment that data. So we'll know exactly, if we know Nick is a Metallica fan, then we can also send him emails when ACDC comes to town, on and on and on. And the same with the flyers. We get our flyer list, and, and then we just resend them offers. With, and, and sometimes it's for merchandise, it's for many different things. So ticketing now has gone from a service to now an incredible marketing tool. Data collection is the way to go. We do pre-sales on shows where we virtually can sell a show out with the push of a button, sending out emails and Twitters and all the things you do to, to the digital marketplace. So it's, it's revolutionary. Um, and it's a great time for someone to be in this business.